Good morning, everybody. We are back for day number two of the 2017 Junior Roller Derby Association Championships here in beautiful Loveland, Colorado at the Ranch Complex. Man, this place is fantastically gorgeous. My name is Al B, and I will be here joined today by my buddy Tool Time. We're here to bring you the action in with the number nine seed Rocky Mountain Roller Punks and the number six seed Darlings of Destruction. Tim, you were over, Tool, you were over here on this track most of the day yesterday. What can we expect from these two teams coming into this game? Well, sadly enough, I didn't get to announce either ah. the dollar the Darlings or Rocky Mountain, but if they're anything like the games we saw yesterday, we're definitely in for a treat. The ones I saw here yesterday, personal favorite was Crooked River Roller Girls versus Gaplin Roller Derby Smashers Elite. That was a really close game up until the end. Pixies played here yesterday against the Gotham Junior Roller Derby. That was a tight game until the very end as well. I also got to see Crooked River go up against Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz doing some hard work on that Good one. Morning, but right now, we're about ready to get started with some derby here. And for Rocky Mountain, we have number 18, Nusi, going up against 28, Bonnet, Vanessa Bonnet. Yeah, good, good. I'm excited to be able to come over here on the other side of the venue. This is a gorgeous complex, and we have two tracks that are – those of you that do a lot of tournaments, you know that a lot of times there's whistleblower because the tracks are so close together. There's like a – these are separate rooms with a hallway in between them. It is a great venue, super slick track. And right off the bat, number 28, the juniors, the Darlings of Destruction, that is number 28, Vanessa Bonnet, jumps out to lead jam. It's going to be interesting to see how the game goes today. Yesterday was due for a lot of the skaters. This floor is super slick just because it's a high-polished concrete floor. So that's something they've had to get used to. Altitude is another thing a couple of the skaters were talking to me about. Just the fact that we're high up here in Colorado. So that's been affecting some performance. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens today now that they've already had a taste of what's in store. But you're right, beautiful venue. No bleed over from one side to the next. I would not mind having another tournament here. And there is a star pass, and that's to number 18 for Rocky. That's Nusi. It was not a star pass. She stashed it and took it away. My bad. I, I stand corrected. You know, speaking of the altitude, that might be advantage Rocky Mountain here because they are they are the home team here. They are Rocky used Mountain to Roller this, Pumps, so they're works. certainly acclimated to the altitude difference. We'll see how that works out for them against the Darlings here. Looks like we have St. Andre jamming for Gabby St. Andre for the Darlings. And it looks like Poison Ivy for Rocky Mountain. Both teams putting up some strong walls. And Darlings, get your lead jam. A strong hit off of turn two. And Darlings of Destruction taking two blockers to the penalty box. Rocky Mountain sending a blocker to join them. And Darlings will call it after putting five on the board. 18 points for Darlings of Destruction to start off here. We're in going into, make that 19. As we go into the next jam, that's number 13, Jawbreaker for Rocky Mountain. And number 44, Tiki Torcher going to work for the Darlings of Destruction. Darlings of Destruction, the supernovas out of Sterling Heights, Michigan. Gets the lead jam. Darlings definitely having to do some work because they're down two blockers. Oh, big hit over off a of turn two, calls it. And that's three points for Darlings. Those of you out there in the Derbyverse watching on WFTDA.TV, first of all, thank you to WFTDA.TV uh, to have 
these juniors be able to be showcased on WFTDA TV is just is just such a pleasure to be involved in that and the fact that we've got junior announcers that we've worked into the fold hot sauce on darlings of destruction did a fabulous job yesterday and she's going to be back some today so it ought to be interesting to hear them but this it is just such a pleasure to be here and uh again shout out special thanks to wftda tv for being here with us back to the derby action now on lead jam once again for the darlings of destruction that's vanessa Number see with some spinny action off a of turn two gets through the initial pass. Both teams down, one blocker. Calls it five points on the board for Darlings. Those of you out there listening to us already, make sure you hashtag JRDA Watch Party if you are there in a group. I know you are. I've seen some of the pictures. So all you got to do if you want to win some cool JRDA swag is take a picture of your watch party that you're having, preferably have have the TV in the background so that we can see it and we can see that you're watching it. But you do your picture. Hey, it's your picture. Do your thing. And then post it on social media. Hashtag JRDA Watch Party. Do that by the end of the tournament tomorrow. And you can win some cool JRDA swag. In addition, if you want to talk, if you want us to see the feedback or if you have questions and stuff, somebody will run it to us if they see it. Just send us something at hashtag talk. To the number two JRDA, or you can go on social media and at JRDA underscore rocks. There you go. That's the hashtags. Hashtag talk to the number two JRDA with your to, with comments or suggestions or just wow wow tool time nice hat you're wearing there or whatever you want to say or uh, at JRDA underscore rocks or at JRDA watch party to win some cool JRDA swag. A lot of information coming in. Right now we have Jawbreaker for Rocky Mountain. And that looks like Tiki Torture jamming for the Darlings. Rocky Mountain down two blockers. Darlings down one. Darlings find a hole on the inside getting your lead jam. Rocky Mountain doing some work off of turn two, trying to get through, makes the initial pass. Darlings through, gets five on the board, calls it. Darlings of Destruction definitely doing a great job on holding the Rocky Mountain girls at, at three points while getting their own. Both the Rocky Mountains blockers are standing in the penalty box, but off the jam line, only two for Rocky Mountain blocking. Meanwhile, the Darlings have four-person wall ready. Lizzie B. Jammin going to work for the Darlings of Destruction, the team in black. And in the red jerseys, that is number 36. Reverse Kology. There you go. Reverse Kology. I like that. Rocky Mountain staying right on Darlings. Gets it to the pack and calls it. To no avail, zero point jam, but excellent work by Rocky Mountain. Number 18, Nusi for Rocky Mountain Roller Punk. Darlings now down two blockers. It looks like we have Gabby St. Andre jamming for the Darlings. Current score is 31 to three, just over, just under 23 minutes left in this half. Rocky Mountain finds a hole on the outside made by her team. Two strong, two person wall by the Darlings off of turn one. Gets the lead jam. And Darlings sending another blocker to the penalty box. They now have a full penalty box. Minus the jammer. Rocky Mountain putting four points on the board. Strong hit off a of turn two, takes her back. And Darling sending another blocker to the penalty box. Rocky Mountain finds a hole on the outside, just outside of turn three and puts five on the board. 14 point jam for Nusi. 
Rocky Mountain sending a blocker to the penalty box as another one re-enters. With some smooth action off of turn four, gets through, puts four more points on the board. And that's four points each on that round. But Rocky Mountain definitely making a comeback with an 18-point jam to Darlings of Destruction's four-point jam. Lots of great action here at this tournament. And if you are speaking of tournaments, we have a lot, a lot of these tournaments that we have uh, in the U.S. are international tournaments in that they're having international teams that are involved. But this just broke the Wednesday, Wednesday before the, I left to travel here. There is actually going to be a truly international JRDA Junior Roller Derby Tournament in Copenhagen coming up next month in August. Teams from nine countries, including USA, Belgium, France, Sweden, England, Scotland, Germany, Holland, and Denmark, all there. And the biggest thing is, if you go to JRDA, their website, and find out about it, because once you get information on this tournament, and you, you'll, they'll give you information on where to go, folks, this tournament is going to stream free of charge. Shut the front door. Absolutely. This tournament will stream free, and it is in Copenhagen, a true JRDA-sponsored tournament that is going to be happening. And I'm, we're, I understand it's going to be a reoccurring thing, or at least over there, because we're trying to get more JRDA tournaments overseas. And this is a great opportunity, and we are really excited about it. JRDA is absolutely excited about it. So if you're not part of JRDA, if you're out there listening and your junior team, your team is not affiliated yet, go ahead and do that. And in a few minutes, I'll give you some information of how you can actually get registered for next year at a discounted rate, the early bird special, to go ahead and get that done. Number 44 and number 13, that is Tiki Torture and Jawbreaker going to work for their teams. Tiki Torture almost immediately gets out with a lead jam status. 41 to 21, Tiki Torture. Tiki Torture and the Darlings of Destructions over... Jawbreaker and Rocky Mountain. We got just about 19 and a half minutes left to go here in the first half. We are starting day two. Man, we're not even getting going good yet. We're not even halfway done with this tournament. You thought you did a lot of derby yesterday. I did do a lot of derby yesterday, <laughs> and I appreciate you for putting me to work, sir. A lot of great fun yesterday. It's been really great go working with the announcers from across the country. I got to work with Scott, which learned so much the entire drive home i'm thinking i'm making notes on all the stuff that i learned from them definitely looking forward to everything i have to announce today i get to announce with Catman, which is going to be a lot of fun but in the meantime in the derby verse we have ripper in half against shakespeare shakespeare for rocky mountain ripper for darlings no lead as of yet but Darling still having problems with penalties, but now we do have a lead for Darlings of Destruction. Rocky Mountain through the initial pass, and Darlings with another blocker to the penalty box. This is going to start costing them as the game goes on. Gets through, calls the jam, four points, Rocky Mountain. And we have an official timeout being called, or at least I see the signal for it. Yes, we do have an official timeout. There it is on the board. That gives me just a second to tell you about that early bird membership I was telling you about. The JRDA is now offering membership registration structures based on each country's local currency rate. So if you're overseas and you want to get involved in JRDA, basically what this means is JRDA membership is $200 for leagues outside of the U.S. That's $200 of that country's local currency, not $200 US dollars. So if a league is in Canada, that is a $200 CAD Canada. If a league is in Australia, it's $200 Australian. If a team is in Mexico, well, you get it. Mm -hmm. If you're a league outside of the United States, please contact tech at juniorrollerderby.org for your country's currency code before completing your member's registration and take advantage of this cool offer. Speaking of taking advantage, Vanessa Bonnet, with your lead jam for the Darlings, putting four on the board. Takes her time on calling it. No points for Rocky Mountain, an excellent strategy. Current score is 51, Darlings of Destruction, so Rocky Mountain's 25. Just, uh, just over 17 and a half minutes left in this half. Right now we have Tiki Torture for the Darlings. 
And we have a timeout called by the Darlings. But also, let's take a moment. On Twitter, you can find us uh, at JRD underscore rocks. And let us know how we're doing. Let give your team some support. Or, a or if you're a fan, just give any of the, these fine young ladies and young men support at hashtag talk to JRDA. That's hashtag talk, the number two JRDA. And if you're a part of a derby watch party, hashtag JRDA watch party. Show us a picture of the party. Have the TV in the back or just have the group of people that you have. I know there are a number of people in Tampa and Jacksonville watching this game so far. Yeah, you, those of you in Florida, you get extra credit if you do the, do the picture at two minutes right before halftime when uh, Tool Time and I are on TV and we're in the background for you. I'm just saying. that Technically, you don't get extra credit, but I'm just telling you. I will <laughs> extend that to Jacksonville as well. <laughs> I said I've, Florida. Jacksonville is part of Florida. Eh, it's a matter of opinion. It's almost, it's almost Georgia. <laughs> you know, while we got here, well, before we get started, uh, the from the dar those of you out there, the darlings of destruction. I would like you when when these two people when they get back to Michigan to Detroit. I would, I mean Sterling Heights. I'm sorry. Womp womp. Please make sure. I'm gonna try this again. That you tell Tattoo Barbie and Shamageddon that. They absolutely killed it. And if you didn't get to hear them this weekend because they were on house, they both did some feeds. Actually, Shaw is going to be on the feed the next game across on the other track. I think it might be the 2 o'clock game. And I am going to be working with her. She said she would not do feed this weekend, but I've convinced her to be on the on, on WFTDA TV tomorrow. I mean today. So please make sure you Shaw and, and Tattoo Barbie have killed it this weekend in the house announcing. The reason that you hear all this excitement is not just the derby. Sometimes when it's lulls in here in the venue, they have been killing it getting the, getting the venue live so that it's a great thing. And I just I love these humans so much. My whole team has been so impressive, and I appreciate it. Right now, Tiki Torture is now lead jam again. Poison Ivy trying to get through for Rocky Mountain. Getting hit hard by that wall of black. It's 51 to 25. Putting three points on the board on that jam. I also want our people in Jacksonville to let Tommy know what a great job he's been doing. And he's only been announcing live for, let's see, three months? He, Tommy is actually, as soon as I heard that we, could, we might be getting WFTDA TV, the first person I called was Tommy Riggins and said, hey, you need to come. Uh, you need to come be on the team here in Loveland, and he took a little bit of persuading, but he has absolutely made. Well, he's made me look like a genius. You and him both. I appreciate both of you for coming. You've done a lot of derby, and you'd be working hard. So it's it's been a great thing. But now Vanessa, Vanessa Bonnet is out there taking lead jam. Jawbreaker for Rocky Mountain is being recycled back as Vanessa comes through, working through that wall of red. Jawbreaker now trying to engage into in those blockers from Darlings of Destruction, which includes, by the way, Hot Sauce. She did do a great job on the call yesterday on the live feed. See, that, that wasn't Hot Sauce, but I was looking. I, I, my apologies. Hot Sauce, I have had so many compliments about that young individual on the mic yesterday never mind her skating into but she's back on the track now with a blocker for things she'll be here later on i'm really trying to cook i'm toying with the idea of doing an all junior announcer game tomorrow sometime and putting her and i don't know somebody like hammer time or sugar or somebody together and, and having a, a junior crew to do a game because you know hey the juniors have done good they're representing pretty well let's get them to call some derby right now saint andre number 23 Going to work for Darlings of Destruction and number Going up against Nusi, number absolutely. 18 for Rocky Mountain. Some hard work being done off of turn one. Darlings of Destruction with a strong wall. Last line of defense, but Rocky Mountain pulls it off with your lead jam. Darlings of Destruction jammer through the initial pass. And Darlings sending another blocker to the penalty box. I believe that's number eight, 187, Sugar Baby. Yep, that is Sugar Baby. Put it, Rocky Mountain puts four on the board. And we have, it looks, official review. Official review called by Darlings of Destruction. While we're waiting for them to review that, Al, how can the people who are listening to us right now let us know if they want, it, want a junior All junior game, absolutely. How can That's they right. let us know that? You know what, you do hashtag talk 
the number two JRDA. That you need to do that. Tell everybody we won an all-junior bout, and I will get, I will make it happen. But only if you tell me, hey, let's do this. Hashtag talk the number two JRDA. You can also reach uh, JRDA at at JRDA underscore rocks. And that is their Twitter account. Of course, you can just fi you can find them with just JRDA on Facebook. But definitely let us know if that's something you're interested in seeing. Al's worked wonders. You got Tommy to come out. And Tommy, although he's only been announcing live derby for a couple of months, he's been doing he's, derby he's, announcing he for is, years. He is definitely a polished. He's He ran a... Uh, Roller Derby show in Jacksonville, Florida, the longest running, actually the only roller derby uh, weekly or monthly show uh, in the country, probably. And he has been, it, it is so cool because it was, it was really weird because when we did Southeast Regionals, when you, you tournament headed the Southeast Regionals in Jacksonville and I came to that, it was amazing how fast Tommy made things happen. I did an interview, he asked me to do an interview mm -hmm. during that, th that tournament and that night at the at the motel, we're watching TV, and I saw the interview that I did on TV. That's how oh, fast yeah. he turned it around. So it was pretty amazing uh, to be at how fast they did that. And he has been a very big part of the roller derby community in Jacksonville for a long time in all of Florida. He has been all over the state of Florida helping out a lot of people. He comes to the wrecking hall in Tampa and works with us sometimes. Uh, you, you as well. I mean, it's, Team Florida is definitely representing both on – All right, I didn't, wasn't able to get all the details, but uh, Darlington Destruction called for a review on a cut track, but the call is going to stand. So we are back, getting ready. Yeah, the no call stood. They wanted to, uh, one of the officials to look at something, and of course they did look at it, but they uh, went right back there. And we're going back to the action now. 14 minutes and 44 seconds left to play here in the first half. 60 to 32, Darlings of Destruction over Rocky Mountain. There is number 99, Ripper, in half. And Rocky Mountain, the home team, Rocky Mountain, reverse Kology, reverse Kology, going to work for Rocky Mountain, taking lead jam. But there goes Ripper in half. She's off to the races, coming around. Reengaging now is reverse Kology, fighting through, trying to get through. But there's Darling's of Destruction, goes through on the outside. She gets through, and a cut called. That's on Darlington of Destruction, number two. Ellen Degenerate gets a cut track. Both teams down, one blocker. I love that name. If somebody hasn't sent that to Ellen, sent that hashtag Ellen Degenerate to Ellen Degeneres, we're missing the boat. We need to make sure Ellen sees that. And now I need there to be a hashtag for getting Ellen Degeneres to announce a junior game. How fun would that be? There you go. You two can exchange dance moves. It'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number 28. That's Vanessa Bonnet and Poison Ivy going to work for their teams. Bonnet just Power Vanessa Bonnet through. powers through. Great job by her. Darling sending a blocker to the penalty box. Rocky Mountain finding a hole on the outside. Gets through. Initial pass completed, but Darling's putting four on the board. I know I've made, oh, Jammer knocks her out, goes back. Excellent time kill strategy. She goes through, no pass, no penalty. That one kind of backfired a little bit. Two points on the board for Rocky Mountain, one for Darlings of Destruction. And if I remember correctly, when we were wa when I was doing house call for California Mayhem, KB Ro the rock star actually knocked out the jammer, then did a full reverse lap and went came out in front of the pivot line, and that was an excellent time kill strategy because the jammer can't get around. If no points are scored, that means you sit, you keep the lead. So that's excellent strategy by KB the rock star for California Mayhem. All right, Gabby St. Andrew, on, Andre on the line for Darlings of Destruction, Jawbreaker for Rocky Mountain. And there goes Gabby St. Andrew. She is 
takes Lee Jam coming back around for her point pass. Jawbreaker still trying to get through for the initial pass. Contact made, a back block in the back called. And, and it that, looks like we may have a power jam. And that's going to be a back block against Darlings of Destruction, Gabby Sid, Andre. Power jam for, Ro for Rocky Mountain Jawbreaker. Darlings of Destruction not making it easy on Jawbreaker. Excellent last line of defense. Good lateral movement there. Almost takes her out, is it? And they do, they bring her back behind turn four. Jawbreaker did enjoy a power jam, but now Darlings of Destruction's jammer back in. Finds a hole on the outside and with some spinny action, gets five on the board. That was a big time move by Jawbreaker coming on in. She found a hole on the outside and it closed quickly, but she was able to do a 360 spin move, staying in, not a going out. That was a fantastic move by Jawbreaker. Rocky Mountain with a show and a little flash here in the Rocky Mountain State. There we go. They are pretty close by. Loveland, Colorado is a beautiful place. It's just right out here in the middle. We're about an hour from the Denver airport, for those of you wondering. Except we go up from there. So if Denver's the mild high city, I think we are more than that at this point. I think the elevation was, I don't know, it was 40-something. It was just, we're up there. Certainly uh, different weather than we're used to down there in the Sunshine State. The humidity doesn't hit you in the face as you walk out the door. This is true. I also did something that I you would it would blow your mind. I may have to wait till your hat's back on to tell you. Yeah, you don't want to do that. I don't, first of all, I don't. <laughs> if you're going to tell me anything that you do that it would blow my mind, let's not do that on the mic because I don't. I, you you scare me sometimes when you do that. Tiki torture to the line for Darlings of Destruction. Shank Spear for Rocky Mountain and another another lead jam for Rocky Mountain as Rocky Mountain, the home team, starting to try to put some stuff together. Tiki torture right behind her coming back around. Nice little apex jump oh. by Darlings of Destruction, but slides straight in. That could turn into a low block. So it does. That's good to make this a power jam for Rocky. And they call it off right off the bat so they can enjoy the power jam right at the beginning. Yep, we'll have a power start. Seventy-seven, seventy-nine for the Darlings of Destruction, 51 for Rocky Mountain. Nine minutes and six seconds left to go here in the first period. Live here at the Ranch Complex in Loveland, Colorado for the JR the 2017 JRD Championships. And of course, we still want to thank WFTDA.TV for doing this live stream with us. This has definitely been a great experience for me. You know, when I accepted, when I first accepted, uh, or when I was accepted to THA this event, it was just going to be a house event. And I was still excited to be part of the JRDA championships. I mean, really, are you kidding me? Yeah. But then when, when they called me and said, hey, uh, can we staff that if we do WFTDA TV too? I was like, uh. So there was, a, there was a little bit of a panic mode that set in, like maybe I have bitten off a little bit more than I can chew. <laughs> and that lasted up until, well, even yesterday morning as we were starting. <laughs> <laughs> but it's turned out to where everybody I brought in has done a great job. I have been so proud of Team Florida, especially. They're represented here. You just have no idea how many Florida people are in this venue going doing work. And the Florida teams have skated real well, the Attack Pack and Tampa. So we're proud of everybody. At Darlings of Destruction, I've, I've worked with them, uh, everybody from them, when they were in Spring Break Swarm in Tampa, Philly, we've worked a couple times in Tampa when they come in. It's so good to get together with all these teams that we work with and to meet new friends at on such a high stage. And to be able to do that on WFTDA TV. And a uh, special shout out to uh, Double H, who is, she's done, she's an announcer extraordinaire. I mean, anybody, just as an announcer, if you're starting in this, when you first start in roller derby and you're listening to different people to that you want to work with, uh, you want to work with Double H. I haven't actually called with her yet this weekend. I'm hoping to rectify that tomorrow. Yet. But uh, the fact that I have got to work with her and team with her to prep this event and 
uh, and, and her helping me guide the team and get us ready for what they needed us to be ready for for WFTDA TV uh, has just been an honor to work with her and with WFTDA TV. And I thank you. I appreciate it very much. Uh, shout out to Scott Chicken, who was also on this crew. Uh, I gave him a he, – well, he, we, him and I did the schedule together, and he's coming in a little bit later today because, you know what, all of us – I try – all of you that were here all day yesterday, I tried to not beat to death today while we have a little bit extra help because tomorrow I'm going to beat you to death again and get to end of work you. But that's okay because tomorrow means championship games, so we will be here and be ready. <laughs> Folks, don't forget, talk to JRD. Talk – the number two, JRDA. Hashtag talk to JRDA. You can say anything you want to say. Talk about how uh, great the derby action is or how you would like to see so-and-so or whatever you want to talk about. Let's hear it. But shout out to the local area, uh, all the Colorado teams. We've had a lot of help from them. Rocky Mountains here skating now. Brad Example came in. He couldn't, he couldn't do the whole tournament. Uh, but he agreed to come in today so that all of us who were working real hard yesterday were able to have a, a game or two off today. So thank you, Brad Example, and everybody locally here who has just – they have been perfect hosts for this tournament so far. We're oh, just, yeah, definitely. We're not even – we're just over a third of the way through. So we got plenty of derby less to go. But I wanted to shout out and say thank you to everyone out there. As we're back to the action, this is Tiki Torcher and Noosey going to work. 79-51. to 51. Darlings of Destruction over Rocky Mountain. Just under nine minutes to play here in the first half. Darlings down on Blocker, but they soon rejoins. Noosey enjoying a power jam so far. Gets your lead. Jammer is standing. Tiki torture for Darlings of Destruction. Strong three-person wall off of turn two. Rocky Mountain gets ready with their four-person wall off of turn two. Tiki Torture okay having to do work. Toe stops have been a huge game changer in this game because there have been a lot of strong walls and you're having to push. And especially with the floors being as slick as they are, you need some good toe stops to be on a floor like this. And both teams doing a great job. Darling to Destruction keeping the pack together in the center. Three person walls each. Each jammer definitely having to push to get through. Rocky Mountain pushing the wall up up close. Finds a hole on the outside of turn four. Gets through five points. Rocky Mountain. Meanwhile, Darling still trying to make something happen. Darling sending a blocker to the penalty box. Tiki Torture is through the initial pass, and Rocky Mountain will call it, but not before putting another four on the board. Seven, just under seven and a half minutes left in this half. 19 point difference. The momentum is definitely changing from one team to another, and we have an official review called by Rocky Mountain. And of course, uh, we talk about Double H coming out. How what a pleasure it is to work with them. Scott Ch Scott was a pleasure to work with. I learned so much from him. It's great when you're working with new people because it helps you develop your style. But let's also give a big shout out to all the refs and NSOs that are out here. The refs, uh, most of the refs, stay on the same track all day with just 20 minute to almost sometimes 10 minute intervals in between. I was exhausted yesterday, and I'm sitting in a nice cushioned chair, whereas those guys looked walking dead by the time we left here last night. So a huge shout-out to our refs, big shout-out to our NSOs, helping us get our information, our stats, keeping everything neat and tidy. Yeah, I have, I have had the uh, experience of spending a whole lot of time with some officials uh, from JRDA and from different tournament heads uh, to see kind of the th uh, the world from their eyes and their angles as we were all kind of staying in one central location. So we're, we're going back and forth each day, uh, each night when we leave the track and we're coming back together. Uh, it has just been a – it's amazing. I learned so much about the officialing 
the official side of it mm-hmm. and from their eyes and able to share some of the the stuff from our eyes and how it works and it's it's been and see I'm I'm experienced in in having a head official and head NSOs that work real well with the announcer crew because in Tampa we just kind of do Christy Cuffs and Vixen and all the officials down there that we just we 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 take pride in how we work very well together and it has been that same atmosphere here at this tournament we were waiting for the official review they will come let us know once they get everything down and well, of course, it's always it a pleasure to go to the wrecking hall, especially when pulled pork's on the menu. We have our head ref coming over. I'm going to turn the mic over to from L. Fred was requesting a cut call on the black camera in turn four. After view, you determined that the camera never touched the infield. No cut call stand. Fred loses Rocky Mountain accepted and requesting a cut call. Uh, the officials once again said, "Nah, we didn't. Nope, that's not how we how we see it." So they lose their review, and no t- no cut called. We're back to derby action. But again, to see the things from the other side, the NSOs and the official side, uh, shout outs to all the, those those of you that volunteer for to officiate both skating and non skating in the derby verse. I thank you because I've learned a lot more about how hard you work from working with people both at the Wrecking Hall in Tampa and here at this tournament. Right now it's Vanessa Bonnet and Poison Ivy jamming for their teams. Vanessa Bonnet jumps out to a quick lead jam status. It's 79 to 60, so Rocky Mountain has inched their way and they've worked their way back into where they're only 19 points down. Very close, still within reach. Everything's no, not very close. I'm sorry. I went womp womp. Certainly close enough. It's 23 points. We got anything can happen. And Rocky Mountain has showed sparks of brilliant jammer work, especially recent in this second in this first half. So look for them to regroup and come out a little bit different in the second half and fix some of the things that are wrong. But then again, darlings of the destruction. I'm very familiar with their coaching staff. They're going to be making some adjustments. And this is going to be an even better second half, I believe, as these coaches get a half to talk over strategy and work out what their plans are for the second half. I'm looking for a great second half of Derby action. We still got six more minutes in this half, but we are just getting started in day two. And now that is Ripper in half and Jawbreaker going for their teams. Jawbreaker being recycled, comes back on the inside, tries to go, but Ripper in half just basically ripped the pack in half and went through there. I see what you did there. Rocky Mountain still trying to make something happen off of turn one. Darlings, excellent blocking, but we have a low block called on the Darlings of Destruction, sending a blocker to the penalty box, something that's going to be interesting in the second half. The Darlings have had uh, some trouble with penalties uh, this first half, so it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out in the second half. But Rocky Mountain has had their share of penalties as well. Yeah, I haven't had the official count, but I noticed it does seem that, I mean, if I'm wrong, then call me out there. You can call me out on it on Talk to JRDA. I don't mind. You don't have to just talk good about me. You can talk bad. We do Not it all bad, the time. Yeah, you, yeah, we talk bad to each other all the time. But if I'm wrong, I mean, but it does look like the Darlings, I don't have an official count, but it looks like the Darlings have spent a little bit more time in the box. And you're right. That's a good point. How that is going to play in later on in the game, we'll see. Uh, Rocky Mountain has done a good job staying when it looked like it, Darlings were going to put a run together, uh, Rocky Mountain was able to stop it and then close the gap a little bit. Now Rocky Mountain is still trying to get through. That is reverse chaology and St. Andre. St. Andre takes lead. Yep, she does. Rocky Mountain still trying to work through off a of, off of turn two. The cover is off. I don't know if there's going to be a cover pass, but she slips through. Through the initial pass. Meanwhile, Darlings are back in the pack on turn two. Powers their way through. Puts spot four on the board. Calls it. And Darlings with just under four and a half minutes left in this half are very close to breaking the century mark. Right now we have number 28 for the Darlings. Vanessa Bonnet going up against number 18, Noosey, for Rocky Mountain Roller Punk. Both teams at full strength with their blockers. Darlings hugging that jammer line off the bat. 
And later today, we're going to have some junior announcers with us who will give us first-hand experience what it's like to skate on this floor, how everything's been affecting them. So it's going to be ex it's going to be great to have people who have skated on this floor giving us a point of view that, honestly, most announcers don't see it from. Hard hit off a of turn two. Darlings. Sending their jammer to the penalty box for a back block. That's going to make this a power jam for Rocky Mountain. But Darling's not making it easy, easy on her. Last line of defense. That looks like rain, pain drop. And number 31. Pound cake. Through the initial pass. Jammer standing for Darling to destruction in the penalty box. Rocky Mountain trying to put something on the board. Darlings are just not letting it happen. Devil Diva holding up that outside line. Pound cake. And hot, so hot sauce. Wait. No, that's Wikipedia. Forearm, Rocky Mountain. Bonnet back in, trying to make something happen. Rocky doing a great job on sweeping, but she manages to stay in. Puts five on the board for Darlings of Destruction. Wee Bonnie Bruiser was the blocker that went to the penalty box for the forearm for Colorado, uh, Rocky Mountain. Darlings up through, another five points for the Darlings. Vanessa Bonnet has, pretty, has had a pretty impressive first half along with a number of the Darlings of Destruction skaters and the Rocky Mountain skaters. These, these athletes, every team here, are such hardworking and athletic individuals. It's really impressive to see all these juniors. Uh, I'm, very pr I'm so proud to be a part of them being able to showcase their talent on WFTDA TV this weekend. It's just been an amazing experience and to watch the great derby action. I was happy just to get to come see sportsmanship at this level and the athleticism, but to be able to be part of them being able to showcase has just been lots of warm fuzzies in the derby verse. Speaking of warm fuzzies and sportsmanship, something that I have yet to experience happened yesterday. I believe it was the Pixies and Santa Cruz came up and shook the hands of myself and Scott as we were announcing thanking us for our work, thanking the NSOs, and that's something you really like to see because NSOs ten and refs tend to be the unsung heroes uh, in roller derby, and that's not just juniors and WFTDA or MRDA. That's derby in general. There are a number of teams here that made a point with their coaches and their players to come to all the volunteers, skating officials, non-skating officials, announcers, medics, and say, thank you for doing this so we can say roller derby. And I tell you what, that's warm fuzzies. That's, that's warm fuzzies. You're right. Poison I, Ivy for Rocky Mountain trying to make something happen off of turn one. Gabby St. Andre for the Darlings stuck at turn one, three-person wall. Both teams putting up a strong defense. Darling sending another blocker to the penalty box. And Rocky Mountain sending their pivot to the penalty box and is joined by the Darling to Destruction pivot. Rocky Mountain has your lead jam. Both jammers through the initial pass. Four points on the board for Poison Ivy. And this could possibly be the last jam. Only 40 seconds left in the half. A minute and 10 seconds left for the jam itself. But Darling sending their blocker to the penalty box for what looks to be a high block. And they call it off right the moment she gets in the penalty box. So Rocky Mountain is going to enjoy a power jam at the start. And with only 16 seconds left in the half, it's going to be close. This will probably, it will most likely be the last question of this. And they call it just in time. 
Rocky Mountain enjoying a power jam off the start. We have Jawbreaker out there doing some work. Darling's not making it easier on her by any means. Strong four-person wall off of turn two. Rocky Mountain's going to catch one of the Darlings, try to break up the pack. Darlings take her out on the inside, bring her back to turn two. Definitely bleeding time. And now Gabby St. Andre for Darlings of Destruction is back on the track. Rocky Mountain with your lead jam. Minute, 18 seconds left in the jam itself, but can be called off at any time. But we are officially done with this half once this jam is over. Double D going to the box for a low block. Double D sending another blocker to the penalty box for a low block. Calls it three points on the board for Rocky Mountain. Unofficial halftime score, 104. Darlings of Destruction to 74, Rocky Mountain. It's definitely going to be an interesting second half. Yeah, the first half when he jumped out, it, it started out, it looked like it was going to be all DOD all the time for the first, for, for few, first few minutes, and they opened up a little bit. But then Rocky Mountain has stayed close. And in my opinion, with the altitude, first of all, they've skated on this, on this surface more. This is a slick four. There is higher altitude than everybody's used to. So... If, in my opinion, if Rocky Mountain keeps it close, then the longer the game's on, you say advantage Rocky Mountain. Of course, DOD is the highest seed, higher seed, so uh, you certainly give them the advantage, and they've done everything they were supposed to do for the most part, but you cannot count Rocky Mountain out. And they have had bouts of great momentum going in their favor. They've had a couple of power jams just near the end of this first half, and as I said earlier, with the penalties, if people start getting taken out, if, it, if you only have a couple of people left, you're going to get tired. And the more tired you are, the more penalty prone you can get, but also the less blocking you can do. Absolutely. That's the tale of the first half, folks. We're going to take a quick break. Thank you for watching on WFTDA TV. We'll see you in a few. And we're back here in Loveland, Colorado, just getting ready to get started to see the conclusion of Darlings of Destruction versus Rocky Mountain Roller Punk. Just so you know, once the game starts, there has been a score change. Three points were added onto Rocky Mountain during the halftime. Some points that got missed, but fortunately that's been resolved. So far, we've gone through, I've already picked up some of the penalties. As I said earlier, Darlings of Destruction with 25 penalties. So that could definitely affect them coming up. And if I'm reading this right, and I like to think I can math well enough, 15 for Rocky Mountain on their penalty board, so they're definitely doing well on penalties, but it's still anyone's game. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with, during halftime, what strategies they're changing, what techniques they're going to use. It's also going to be interesting to see how well the endurance level is going to go, just because with any, with any JRDA league, there's a lot of conditioning that takes place, both on and off the track, which definitely pays off when you're at high levels like this, especially when you're up at, literally, up in high levels, such as Colorado. So it's definitely a change of pace for everyone. I'll be joined soon by Al B, but later today, we're going to have Gaplin going up against the Pixies. That's at 12 p.m. At 4 p.m., we're the... Winner of this game will be going up against Ru Crooked River. At 8 p.m., we're going to have ACJD A-listers going up against Santa Cruz. And at 2 p.m., we're going to have Galaxy going up against Gotham. Both teams did well that yesterday. I got to see a good number of them. And after today, we'll have upgraded brackets for Sunday. But for right now, we are ready for some derby. All right, looks like we have Bonnet jamming for Darlings of Destruction. Going up against Nusi for Rocky Mountain. Again, during halftime, I hope we got plenty of pictures from hashtag JRDA watch party. Uh, so we get, hope we got some comments, some positive comments from hashtag talk to JRDA. 
But if you haven't done it, be sure to do so with the JRDA watch party. You can win some swag. But in the meantime, Bonnet with your lead jam for Darlings. Darlings so far with one blocker in the penalty box. And Rocky Mountain with one blocker in the penalty box. Both blockers standing. Jam is over, and that is two for Darlings of Destruction. I cannot believe you started without me. You weren't going to hold it up and say, wait, Al's not here? I did, but they started <laughs> laughing at me, so. No, I had to go uh, do a couple of little tidbits that I had to run. I thank you for, I hope you entertained the masses. But did it come back live to us at two minutes, at the two minute mark? Oh, I was ready to go. Headset on, numbers in and front you, of me. You trained me well, There sir. you go, brother. Good, 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 good. I like it. All right, here we go, back to the derby action. We are in jam number two of the second half, 106 to 77, 28 minutes and 55 seconds left to go in the game. Track cut called on DOD. That's number 44, Tiki Torture. So now this is going to be Jawbreaker in control. No. Yes, Jawbreaker is now lead. Jawbreaker got through the first time. I believe there was a no pass, no penalty called, and so was not lead. But then now that the DOD jammer was is in the box, and the Jawbreaker got through, Jawbreaker is now lead jam. Two Darlings of Destruction in the box. The teams have switched benches now, so we are over here. We have a DOD with us instead of Rocky Mountain. I love the fact that near both of the benches are near the R that on both tracks, our announce table is right by at least one of the benches. So we get to spend a half with each team and then get to watch different coaches interact with their teams. And I, I dig it. I really like uh, the whole being able to see and learn different ways of, and there's so many different coaching styles. And whether you like, uh, like or agree with all of them, it is really, really cool to watch these young athletes uh, and the way they embrace their coaches' words. It's definitely fun to watch just because they're so open. They soak up everything like a sponge. If I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, Sugar and Spice, who announced with me yesterday against Gotham and the Pixies, that was the first time I think she's been on mic, and what a job she did. It's almost like her home team announcer rubbed off on her. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But that was a lot of fun, and it's definitely going to be fun to work with them during this, just to see them learn. And also, because as much fun as we have with this, we eventually, too, will have to go to past year. So it's great to that we have juniors starting their announcer game now. So by the time they get up to our level, they'll well, be see, at our level long well, see, before we see, ever thought well, about it. First of all, there's been some, the, some of the juniors that announced yesterday and that you're hearing again today. Folks, if you did not get a chance to listen to the junior announcers, uh, on the WFTDA TV stream yesterday. You need to pay attention today because we do have, I think there's still three games each where we have announcers that are juniors going to be paired with uh, an adult announcer, and the juniors are just really blowing people's minds. It is unbelievable. Uh, I, I had not actually announced with Sugar. I've worked with her on some other things when we were, you know, just kind of different stuff, league stuff. You know how that goes. Uh, and... I knew she would do good. Uh, Hammer Time, also from Tampa, he announced yesterday on the track. And I've had nothing but positive feedback about those two, as well as Hot Sauce from DOD. And I was told before this tournament that, that Hot Sauce was going to come in here and blow some people's minds when she started talking on the mic. And those of you out in the WFTDA land would talk to JRDA have just blown up talking about how great Hot Sauce and Hammer Time and Sugar and Spice and Catman over on the other track. He's been there. Uh, he's a matter of fact, he's, he's, he's calling right now with our buddy uh, standby Tommy Riggins over there on track number one. So, yeah, I'm very pleased. This little thing, this idea we had to actually put juniors calling Junior Derby, I have a feeling it's going to be a trend changer. So speaking of which, looking on the camera now, that is Hot Sauce who will be announcing the next game here along with Brad. So that's going to be an interesting game to see. I believe the next one is Inland Northwest against Gaplin. So that'll be an interesting game. But like you said, it's really great to work with these young people. I learned things off of working with them. And Catman. Go ahead. Sorry, we have an official review going on right now. All right, Al, what do we got? 
There was a non-lead change. I, I, I didn't hear the whole thing, and we have – I'll tell you that in a minute. We'll just go on. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I missed that. I was doing something else. I'll get back with you. Womp womp. Go ahead. Tell everybody Al's lost his mind. Yeah. Everybody already knows Al. I know, right? But in the meantime, we got Bennett jamming for her Darlings of Destruction. Going up against Reverse K Kology. Both teams, strong walls. Darlings of Destruction bringing a blocker back to break up the wall, and it pays off. Darlings with your lead jam. Rocky Mountain sending another blocker to the penalty box. That is Vanessa Bonnet, Vanessa number 28 for Darlings of Destruction. Great she, move by Vanessa as she works through, works her way through. Five more points. It's 111 to 82. 27 minutes left to go here in the second half of the first game of day two. We still have another two days of derby action coming to you live on WFTDA TV. Thank you very much for those of you listening out there. Stay tuned for all the action all day long. Like Tool said, uh, Hot Sauce will be here with Brad Example. Colorado's own Brad Example is here in-house. He's doing a house call on the track one right now, but he'll be over here doing the next game with Hot Sauce. This should be a great one. It is 116 to 82. SKology now comes back through, gets the stakes to Star Pass. Star Pass was given off to Mortalis. Absolutely. Calls it off. Four more points on the board for D Darlings. And if I'm doing the math right, not the previous jam, when Torture went to the penalty box for as, as the jammer, I believe that puts her at five penalties, so this is definitely going to affect how the game is played in this half. The coaches are going to have to be smart about who's going in because you don't want your best players fouling out too early. Of course, we don't want to ever want players fouling out, but it does happen. Meanwhile, we have Gabby St. Andre for Darlings of Destruction going up against Poison Ivy for Rocky Mountain. Darlings brought back behind the pivot line. Meanwhile... Poison Ivy with your lead jam for Rocky Mountain. Darlings doing some work off of turn two, and Darlings are through the initial pass. Both teams at full strength with their blockers. Rocky Mountain having to do some work off of turn three. Some excellent last line of defense blocking by number 99. By number 99, Ripper in half. Four points on the board for Colorado on that one. 25 minutes left. Current score is 121 to Rocky Mountain's 86. But we have seen Col we have seen Rocky Mountain whittle away at that lead and break the gap. So let's see what they can do with this. Number 33 jamming for Rocky Mountain. That's Shakespeare going up against Tiki Torture for Darlings of Destruction. And we have a multiplayer block that's going against Darlings of Destruction. Rocky Mountain brought back behind the pivot line. Cover is off, but finds a hole on the inside through the initial pass. Darlings with your lead jam. Goes in, calls it. One point for the Darlings on that one. And yeah, the coaches from DOD wanting them to Call it off quickly, and they did. Darlings of Destruction, 122. Rocky Mountain, 86. 24 minutes left to go here in the second half. Number 18, Nusi on the line against number two. That is Ellen Degenerate. The crowd definitely getting behind this game. We got Nusi for Rocky Mountain with your lead jam going up against Ellen Degenerate. Both jammers through the initial pass. Rocky Mountain forming a strong four-person wall off of turn two. Sends a blocker in to break up the pack. Gets in. And that is one point per jammer on that one. All right, and we have Tiki Torture out there for Darlings of Destruction. 
Going up with Jawbreaker for Rocky Mountain. Tiki Torture, as I said, if I'm, re if I'm right, is now at five penalties, so definitely has to stay clean throughout this. But with the lead they have right now, she just needs to play smart. Rocky Mountain pulling, a pulling away at the front. Called a lead jam, but gets called out. And that's a high block. Goes back in, a little confusion it seems for the Rocky Mountain Jammer who has been called out on a high block penalty, but is still playing. Not sure what's happening at the moment. Okay, no, that call was put was against the Darlings of Destruction. Sorry, there was a lot happening. I couldn't tell if it, the call was against the Rocky Mountain or if it was against Darlings of Destruction, but Rocky Mountain enjoying a power jam at the be right now. Darlings doing a great job sweeping, holding her at turn four. And Darling St. Andre going to the penalty box for a cut track. Rocky Mountain in the meantime puts four on the board. And Torture through the pass. Rocky Mountain putting five on the board th through that last pass. And a whole lot of sports happened in that. A little confusion on my part as to the jammers but they seem to have figured everything out. And that looks like six point jam for Rocky Mountain. Current score is 123 to Rocky Mountain's 94. We have Bonnet jamming for Darlings. Rocky Mountain, reverse geology, gets your lead jam. Darling to the destruction, down a blocker, as is Rocky Mountain, but Rocky Mountain gets their blocker back in. Both teams now up to full strength. Rocky Mountain finds a hole on the inside, gets the points. Rocky Mountain puts four on the board. Darling to the destruction, put two. Thank you, Mr. Tutum. Great job. You calling the derby action. I know you feel like I left you there for a minute. I'm, I apologize. I don't mean to bail on you. I, I, actually, I should do that. That was for your training. I just wanted to make, I'm just trying to see how, no. Oh, uh, yeah, that I had, uh, works. had to have, I'm wearing my THA hat for a few minutes, going in and out. I had some stuff I had to deal with. I thank you very much for calling the action and keeping everybody up to date on what's going on. I'll give you a sec break for a second. That's number 187. That is Sugar Baby, four Darlings of Destruction against Nusi for Rocky Mountain. Rocky Mountain still only 27 points different in this game, so in this bout. So we got lots of action going on. Still got plenty of time, just under 20 minutes, 19 minutes and 45 seconds left to go here in the game. Darlings of Destruction still in the lead. They've pretty much been in the lead most of the game, but Rocky Mountain has stayed close, and they continue to close things up. And right when you think, okay, Darlings of Destruction is going on a run, things like this happen, and Nusi takes lead jam for Rocky Mountain. Jam number nine here in the second half. 19 minutes and 23 seconds left to go. It's 125, 98. Nusi comes into the pack being recycled. She's met again by Hot Sauce and number 227. That is Wikibledia. How's that for a derby name? <laughs> you definitely see some good ones traveling around. Uh, Sugar Baby coming back around. She's come, ooh. And she engages with Rocky Mountains, but there is Nusi coming out. Great move by Nusi going into turn number three at the end of the back straightaway. Wow, what a move. And she's, she tried it again. She was pushed out this time. We have a Rocky Mountain skater. That is number 22, Mortalis. She's going to the penalty box. And Wikibledia now taking the star, doing what she needs to do. Three to one, Rocky Mountain, that jam, wait. 
Rocky Mountain breaking the century mark. 20 point difference between the two teams. Rocky Mountain doing an excellent job on holding the score. We have an official review being called though. Official review called by Rocky Mountain. And this time we'll be sure to catch on to that. Again, we want to remind you at 12 o'clock, we have Gaplin going up against the Pixies. And then today at 4, for the, loot, the winner of this game will be going up against Crooked River. But we still have plenty of action over at track 1. Right now, we have Philly versus River City. And then at 12, we have Reservoir Dolls going up against Mob City. Well, that'll determine the brackets for the 4 p.m. and the 6 p.m. game. But Florida teams will be taking on a, at 4 p.m. Tampa taking on the winner of Philly versus River City. Attack Pack taking on the winner of Reservoir Dolls and Mob City. And, of course, we have Mayhem and Diamond City, which is going to be a game to watch. That is an official timeout. All right, everything seems to be going well. Yeah, the officials had to, I think there was something that the coaches wanted to talk about with the officials. We do have a setup now where we'll be able to put the, get the house mic to be able to come over and so that when the officials come to review, we should be able to get it out to you guys. If not, we'll continue to relay what information as we get. Vanessa and Poison Ivy going to work 129 to 105, a 24 point difference for DOD. 17 minutes and 46 seconds left to go here in the second half of the first game. Four points on the board for Rocky Mountain. Hot sauce for Darlington Destruction back in and going to work right away, breaking up the Rocky Mountain wall. Rocky Mountain down two blockers. Excellent lateral movement. Darlings of Destruction sending their pivot to the penalty box. Four more points on the board for each jammer on that one. And they're gonna let it ride. Darlings of Destruction holding that outside line. And that's four more points. That was impressive. 12 points on that jam for Darlington to Destruction. 12 points for Rocky Mountain. Still a tight game. Just over seven, 16 minutes left in, the, in this game. St. Andre jamming for Darlings. Going up against Jawbreaker for Ro Rocky Mountain. Hot Sauce and Ripper in half in the penalty box. Ripper in half standing. Rocky Mountain doing some work off of turn one. Gets through. Both jammers through the initial pass. He gets Still see the skaters struggling with. You definitely still see the skaters struggling with this floor. And when we say it's shiny, I mean I can see people in the floor from across the way. That is a high polished floor, which looks great for a venue. And when you're doing certain sports, but when you're on wheels like this, going at incredible speeds, that gives you almost no traction. So it takes a lot of control on the skaters' part. But based on the games we've been seeing. They're, so making, they're making the adjustments that they need to be made. Yeah, it is polished yes. concrete. It is slick. As a matter of fact, before I even came here, you, I messaged, I was asking uh, an official, Mary Chaos, that was here officiating and said, hey, hey, what's the floor like, Chaos? And Chaos said, it is slick. With about 27 eyes, I believe, is what she put in there. But I don't need. Anyway, shout out to Mary Chaos. I tried to get Mary Chaos to come out here, but she couldn't make it. She's doing all kinds of roller con fun stuff, and she just couldn't make it to this trip. 
couple, I have a couple of announcers. Corey Mendel, my buddy, my partner in Tampa Roller Derby, wanted to make the trip and was unable to do so. I miss you, buddy, but, you know, hey, we're having a good time. I, sh I should get you a postcard with, temp with Tool Time and a nice face on it and say, sorry, buddy, wish you were here. Wish you were here. Right now he's cursing me, but that's okay. Don't curse, dude. This is a junior event. <laughs> As we do have in another timeout on the floor, we're back over here on track two. Lots of great action still to come all day long. Coming up next, it will be the Inland Northwest Roller Derby Pixies against Gapland Roller Derby Smashers Elite. Coming up in game number eight here on this. Daryl Payne, look, I'm going to photobomb Daryl Payne. Ah, there we go. All right, we're about ready to get started, but keep leaving those comments at hashtag talk to JRDA or go onto our Twitter at JRDA Rocks. Let us know how we're doing. Give us some support. We need all we can get here at the 2017 Junior Roller Derby Championships here in Loveland, Colorado. And again, we want to thank WFTDA.TV for letting us stream. In the meantime, Lizzie. Lizzie B. Jammin with your lead jam for Darlings of Destruction. Reverse Kology trying to make something happen. Or unless I missed it. No, she is not making something happen. She is in the penalty box, so Darlings are enjoying a power jam as of right now. Yep, Lizzie B. Jammin for sure as Kology now is in the box, like you said. Getting up, actually coming soon. And now Lizzie B. Jammin's working her way through the pack. As now Darlings of Destruction starting to pull away a little bit. Rocky Mountain got something to say about now as the other as the jammer comes out of the box. That's reverse chaology again coming out live. Both of them there hot coming in. Ooh. Jammer hitting each other out the side. It's always great when you see the jammer switch from jamming to blocking. Definitely saw that off of turn three. Rocky Mountains pulling through. And that is the initial pass, it seems. Yes, the red jammer came in, and that was reverse chaology. And she came in and looked. It was lucky because it could have been. It, it, it was very questionable going in because she came in hot on and had a, uh, hit the opposing jammer right before coming to the pack. Certainly a clean hit, but it was she was it looked, it certainly didn't want her back in the box. Bonnet number 28, as I'm stumbling all over my tongue for whatever reason, all of a sudden. Bonnet number 28 going to the jammer line for DOD. Rocky Mountain is sending Nusi back. Nusi has jammed quite a bit, and so has so has Vanessa. Vanessa gets through with your lead jam for DOD. Both teams now back up to full strength on blockers. Shout out to those DOD fans out there. I know you're enjoying watching this. Make and sure if you are watching this as a group, hashtag JRDA Watch Party, hashtag us, show us a picture. You could win JRDA swag. Absolutely. Folks, don't forget to go to the JRDA Facebook page and see all the information I was telling you about earlier with the early bird sign-up specials as well as that international tournament in Copenhagen coming up. Uh, JRDA is super excited about the, 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 just the thought of having an international, an actual international tournament over there with all the countries. It's just, we're so excited about it. JRDA is so excited. I'm and excited should, about it. I hope I get the opportunity to go. Things could change, but what an opportunity that would be to be doing a call with someone that speaks a different language for all I know. I do that every time I work with you, Tool Time. Thank you very much. I'll be here all week, folks. I'll be here right here. Ripper and half and Jawbreaker going to work. <laughs> Just under 12 minutes to go in the second half. I did what not many people can do. I left Tool Time speechless. I have something in my eye. I'm not crying. <laughs> Jawbreaker <laughs> and Ripper in half going to work. No pass, no penalty called on as we're still going. And Ripper in half again diving down on the inside of that back straightaway. Great job by Ripper in half coming through. Jawbreaker gets through, calls off the jam, scores four points on that pass. So it looks like it's going to be a six to one. 
It's funny, I'm listening to, to Shaw do the same thing on the house, figuring out, trying to figure out how many points. It hasn't hit the scoreboard yet. I'm sure it will. Timeout being called by Darlings of Destruction. And again, we want to remind you that there is a game coming up after this. We have Gaplin going up against the Pixies. Pixies did an excellent job against Gotham last night. I got to got the privilege of announcing that with Sugar and Spice. And if I remember correctly, the Pixies did something that I have never seen in my five plus years of Derby announcing. They made two official reviews and won the challenge on both of them. Wow, there you go. It's ha I've ne I rarely see an official review be overturned, but I got to see it twice yesterday going up against the Pixies. Gotham did a great job yesterday, and they'll be playing Galaxy today at 2 p.m. But at 12 o'clock today on track two, Gaplin will be playing the Pixies over on track one in the open division. 12 o'clock, Reservoir Dolls will be playing Mob City, so that'll definitely be a game to watch. And we are back with more Derby. Looks like we have St. Andre Day going for Darlings of Destruction. Number 55, Poison Ivy for Rocky Mountain. And plows through that wall with your lead jam, Rocky Mountain. Both jammers through the initial pass. Gabby St. Andre coming around. Gives me a, a chance again to thank Tattoo Barbie for doing such a great job working with us all day yesterday. And she'll be back all day today. I do thank you very much. Those of you out there, I know she can't hear because she's here in the venue somewhere. I have, I've seen her, but I have, I've been on the track. So, uh, but those of you, y'all make sure that you, show, you let her know that Al B was showing her derby love because we could not have done it without her Shaw uh and all the other announcers that came here and hang out. You know, Shaw just talked about something on the on the house broadcast. Uh, that's right, Monday World Cup tryouts are going to be right here in this same venue. So uh, I'm actually going to stick around and volunteer because my flight doesn't leave till Monday evening. So I'm going to, instead of going off and getting into trouble, I'm going to come back and volunteer for the World Cup tryouts to hang out and check out the 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 future of roller derby continued as we go get the world to team but the future of roller derby is right here right now folks if you're not a fan of junior roller derby before this weekend you certainly need to hang out with us all weekend and you will be a lot of times when you see streams they're just expensive or you're not sure if you can you want to get the the whole package this is actually a very affordable way for grandma and and aunts and uncles and everybody else to see this tournament here this weekend for twenty dollars you can see the whole weekend so even if you get it today if you've missed game one day one you still got lots of derby action so tell if, if grandma's not have never has never seen Susie play you need to you need to go ahead and buy her the twenty dollar package and let her watch it on her tablet or her electronic device and see all the exciting derby action and they get to hear the golden tones of Al B tool time Stand by and Scott Chicken and all the rest of the gang here at Roller Derby. So please get on WFTDA TV and check out all the action this weekend. We are so proud that you guys are here. St. Andre again coming back around. Reverse Chaology with your lead jam, however. 54 point difference between the two. Oh, that's changed. 51 point difference between the two. And while we're talking about the junior roller derby being the future of this sport, Rocky Mountain actually has a couple of skaters that is gonna be aging out this year. That's a cute MI, Mortalis, and I believe Peaches and Scream is gonna be aging out this year too. In Jacksonville, Taylor actually aged out earlier this year. She's been playing with our adult league, and it's been amazing to watch her for since she was a little kid. And now she's with the adult team doing great work there. The Magic City Misfits, if I remember correctly, got Logan after he aged out. So that's definitely going to benefit them. All leagues will benefit from Junior Roller Derby, in my opinion. 
Absolutely. If you're not, if you are an adult league and you are not actively involved in in nurturing your junior league, you are not doing this right. Because I have personally one of the one of the personal. I don't know. It's very rewarding to me to work with these junior athletes in these sports, and they these athletes, and they are the future of our sport. Uh, I had the honor of calling Anna Chang as a when she was Apollo Anna as a junior, mm -hmm. and now then she was a Tampa Tantrum skater, and now she is skating for Atlanta. I have also called for Blue Storm, Tootsie Pop, and many other. Tampa skaters that have been able to watch them come up through the system and there'll be more coming out this year so folks if you are in part of a WFTDA league and you are not actively involved because a lot of times a lot of leagues the the adults and the juniors are kind of run as separate operations and yes Tampa Junior Roller Derby and Tampa Roller Derby are they're separate, separate entities leagues, but they have they have a they similar goal they are very similar and they and Two Tampa skaters are the coaches for Tampa Junior Roller Derby. I mean, you got Lauren Kill and Rojo Grande, legends in adult roller derby, especially in the southeast and all across. Just you, you, if you trust me, if your league is not actively involved in your junior league, you are doing this wrong. All Six right. minutes and five seconds left to go here is Vanessa and Poison Ivy jamming for their teams. Vanessa gets through. She is lead jammer. It is 180 to 129, 185 to 129 now. As Rocky Mountain back at full strength as their players have all cleared out of the box. Both teams at full strength now. Vanessa works her way through. And we do have a cover pass off to number 16. That's Cream Bomb. Calls it. No. 10 points for 14 points for DOD no points for Rocky Mountain you can't take Daryl anywhere alright <laughs> we have Ellen DeGenerate jamming for DOD and see that's the sportsmanship I like to see even though they're competitive against each other there's always time for a high five and or dance off see Ellen DeGenerate was and the other gen and <clears throat> sorry, Ella Degenerate and Jawbreaker were being kind to one another. Speaking of being kind to one another, you guys need to send Ellen Degenerate the message of and ha show show her Ellen Degenerate. Uh, let's get Ellen out and call in some derby because, as you know, Ellen loves to be kind to one another. <laughs> You're welcome. A little bit of a mishap for Rocky Mountain off of turn one. Jammer blocking I'm, Jammer. Rocky Mountain files through the hole on their team. No, no points on that one. Both teams, I knew about the track coming in, and I knew it was slick, but it didn't look like to be yesterday, most of the day, it didn't look like it was that much of an issue. I wonder if it was just that I didn't notice it or if the – but I've seen more mishaps. That's because you've never been a skater. No, but I've seen – no. I know it was an issue, and I've seen that, and I know that. But today, in this morning's game, you see a lot more spills because of the track. That oh, yeah, like that. definitely. We didn't see a lot of that yesterday. I don't know if everybody was being more careful. Mm -hmm. And now they're starting to feel a little bit more comfortable, so they're taking some more chances, and it's not paying off for them. But I have seen more slips this morning than I seem to see most of the day yesterday. That was my only point. I know it wasn't. It definitely is. But Lizzie B. Jammin and Reverse Chaology. Jamming for their teams, 194 to 129. Three and a half minutes left to go here in the first, the second half of the first game on track number two. Lots of derby action on both tracks throughout the day. Check out the, the brackets. Go to Junior Roller Derby Association and check them out and see what we got going on. There's been a lot of people posting uh, pictures of the large brackets that are here in the wall. The great, those are fantastic to have. As Lizzie B. Jammin now takes lead jam, she's lead jam, and she's coming back around trying to add to that Darlings of Destruction lead. Darlings of Destruction at this point, now they're trying to cross the 200 mark. They're going bicentennial today if they can do it. They need six more points to do so. Excellent blocking, and it looks like we do have a cover pass. Successful. Off to number 16, Green Bomb. But again, calls it off. 
four points going to Darlings of Destruction on that one. Only two away from breaking the bicentennial mark. Sugar Baby will be jamming for DOD on this one. Going up against number 18, Nusi for Rocky Mountain. Two minutes, 17 seconds left in the game, but they could go longer once the jam gets started. We, did, we saw it earlier in the first half of this game at the end. Likely see it again. Nusi trying to get through, but Pound Cake making her work for it. Nusi gets through, gets her lead jam for Rocky Mountain. Rocky Mountain sending their pivot to the penalty box. And we have a no pass, no penalty on the DOD jammer. She is through the initial pass. Rocky Mountain doing some work off of turn three. Calls it. Gets her four points on the board. But didn't have left to go in the game. Barring a miracle, Darling Destruction is going to take this one. But Rocky Mountain not making it easy for them by any means. So this is definitely a great game so far. DOD has done a great job staying consistent, hit, getting their points, and then calling it, keeping the point gap in their favor. And we have Poison Ivy for Rocky Mountain going up against Ripper and Half for DOD. Ripper and Half doing some work off of the pivot line, gets through, gets your lead jam. Poison Ivy still trying to make something happen off of turn one. Looks if you're wondering where, where, where these teams are gonna go next, the Darlings of Destruction are going to play, I believe it is Crooked River. Yes, because Santa that Cruz moved on. So Darlings of Destruction are believe against Crooked River at four o'clock right here on this track. Rocky Mountain will go to play at 10 o'clock tomorrow. And I do not have, they will play the loser of the next game against Pixies in Gapland. All right. All right, and this will likely be the last jam of the game. Current score is 202 to Rocky Mountain's 133. And we have Bonnet jamming for DOD, going up against Jawbreaker. Jawbreaker powers through, finds a hole on the outside, gets your lead jam. DOD out of the pack through the initial pass. And Rocky Mountain sending two blockers to the penalty box. That's gonna make this some hard work for Jawbreaker. But she takes it in stride, gets in, gets her points, calls it. Four points for Rocky Mountain, four for Darlings of Destruction, and we have your unofficial final. 2.06 to 137. Rocky Mountain not letting DOD get away with anything easy. Great work on both sides. We're gonna take a commercial break before we get ready for our next game. Al, do you have anything to add? No, you guys, um, thank you very much for letting us into your homes out there under WFTDA-TV. Stay tuned as the next game over here will be uh, the Pixies and Gapland over here on track number two. Uh, great exciting action by DOD. DOD did a great job, and they'll be moving on to play Crooked River at 4 o'clock. My name is Al B. This is Tool Time. Thank you for watching on WFTDA-TV.